I love that you brought up alchemy. It's something I've studied for a long time. I understand that what you're doing is an alchemical model and that leads to transmutation of the person, of the soul, I, of everything, right? Exactly. I built an entire model of alchemy that's taught in my holistic lifestyle coach level two professional training. Uh, goes deeper, but then I have a, a, a online system called Check Four Quadrant Coaching Master, which is the very deep training. But Check Level Fours are actually taught psychological and spiritual and social alchemy, so that by that time they have enough maturity and skill of mastery of anatomy, physiology, movement that they're ready to go through a deep internal process. So I apply the model of. Uh, psychological and social and relationship alchemy to them in their training and teach them how to use the model to identify where they have shadow tendencies and unconscious blocking factors and belief systems that are in the way and where trauma needs to be healed because it's affecting their perception of reality. Yeah, very cool. And if you're listening, you don't know about alchemy, look into it. It's not just about transmuting lead into gold. No. It is much more. I mean, Paracelsus, some of the greatest healers were alchemists first. Scientists were alchemists yeah. back then. New Newton was an alchemist. Newton was a huge alchemist. That's true. Yeah. People don't realize that because they think science, you couldn't have been an alchemist, but that's exactly what it was. Yeah. All of these people use pendulums and other things to, to come up with ideas almost, to, to yes. check themselves. And Carl Jung was the first one to really decode the alchemical opus right. and show that there was actually two camps of alchemists, chemical alchemists, which mm -hmm. were actually trying to turn lead into gold for reasons of profit, and spiritual alchemists who were actually using the principles of alchemy as a spiritual process. And the way they figured this out is when alchemy really began, it was involved in things like metallurgy and, and mm -hmm. figuring out how to make dyes and paints and things like that. But what happened is the alchemists kept noticing that whatever their mood was or whatever was going on inside of them was altering their chemical processes and it was mirroring itself back at them. So if they were happy, the rate of chemical changes and the effects that things had was different than if they were upset or irritated. And so Jung describes how through years and years of working in labs, they begin to notice that their psyche was affecting the materials they were mm -hmm. working with. And they realized that as they changed themselves on the inside, their ability to make changes in the outer world was facilitated as well, which triggered off really the, the uh, alchemical process of spiritual development, which had to be carefully hidden from the church because they used to burn mm -hmm. alchemists at the stake all the time for practicing um, true religion. Yeah. And, and alchemical medicine, it's spagyric medicine out of Germany and other places, India as well, is really fascinating too, because you're taking yes. natural elements and you're creating a complete formula, a complete medicine that, that works on all areas of the body, mind, body, and spirit, and is more than the sum of its parts. I was always taught by alchemists. It's when you combine and you have the synergy and then you have these other components that go into it in a process that abides by nature, you're enhancing yeah. it to a pl place where it really is more than the sum of those parts. It is. And in, in the study of the universe is a study of alchemy. All you got to mm. do is look at how stars are born, uh, look at how planets are born and die, look at how metals are transformed through heat and fire, how elements are made in stars. So uh, the original alchemists were really just great um, philosophers of nature or, or um, natural philosophers, which were the original scientists. People like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo mm -hmm. were natural philosophers. Yeah, and I think we need to bring alchemy back <laughs> because it's, well, it's one of those yeah. traditions that has been lost, has been somewhat perverted, you could say, and no one looks to it. To, for answers anymore. Very few. I know in, in the United States, when we brought over alchemical medicine, it was incredibly hard for doctors to get on board. I mean, to understand yeah. all of that was w way beyond a medical type of understanding of it. There's a lot of alchemy going on, but it's called chemistry. You yeah. see, we're conditioned to a scientific materialist viewpoint, but even within the sort of standard model, uh, circles, there's many that have made observations that led to them realizing there was something else going on 
that mm-hmm. ultimately triggered them to investigate only to realize that there are subtle energies and subtle factors. For example, here's an example of a simple observation. I was led by my soul to creating rock formations that charge water up and structure water. Mm -hmm. So long story made short, my soul taught me how to put stones and create a giant cone that looks like a a woman's breast coming up out of the ground, like a mosque. Mm -hmm. So imagine a mosque with a stone door and I would put five gallon glass bottles of water in there. And it would structure the water within 24 hours and cause radical changes in the water that made it much more vital and healing for the body. And I began to notice that the water would taste very different. Some days days it would taste like nickel. Mm. And some days it would taste like dirt. And some days it would have no taste at all. And then I noticed some days it tastes like it's a solvent and it has no taste, but it's going right through my tissues. And other days it's like it's carbonated and it's so charged with energy. It's mind boggling. And I begin to say, okay, what's going on? And I said to my soul, what's making, how in the world do you get water to taste like nickel or dirt when it's in a glass bottle that's a centimeter thick? Mm -hmm. And my soul, I, I happened to be at night getting the water and my soul just turned my head around and pointed up at the moon. He mm-hmm. said, it's the moon. Mm-hmm. So my soul said, get a moon chart. So I got a moon chart and I started paying attention to the quality of the water and the taste of the water. And I, th- I found as sure as hell, every phase of the moon has an effect on the water and the structure of the water, how it interacts with the soil and that the energy of the moon is causing vibrational effects that actually take the metals in the earth and the soil and even the microorganisms and imprints those energies right into the water. And now you have the basis of homeopathy and energy medicine. And I figured it out by watching what the moon was doing to water sitting in my front yard surrounded by rocks. That's alchemy. Oh, yeah. No, that, that is almost the definition of alchemy because you're literally imprinting those vibrational things into one of the greatest, greatest carriers of information, water. Right. As we know, water is an incredible. We're 70 percent or so of water. Yeah. So, I mean, that goes back to us being kind of alchemical beings. Yes. Right. And, and the only thing the, the yeah. only thing that is as potent as water for carrying information is light. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Guess what? The matter of your body is made out of entangled light. Atoms are entangled light. So we're made of two things with almost an infinite capacity to carry energy and information, water and light. <laughs> Do you feel like that may be the future of where we go in medicine? Not, not even looking this generation, but hundreds of years from now, really focusing on information medicine, meaning we give totally. the body information to do what it needs to do through light, through water, through these applications. Well, it's interesting. If you look in physics at a definition of energy, it will tell you that energy is related to the capacity to do work. But if you look in farming or in biology, energy is related to the capacity to maintain order. If you then look at the word information, it means information. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realize that. But what makes something a piece of information is it's a recognizable pattern. We all know there's 26 levels letters to the alphabet And whatever formation they're in changes the meaning and we interpret it differently. So when we're looking at information as it relates to health, we have to say what's out of formation or in a state of dissonance or disharmony or uh, or entropy, Mm -hmm. chaos, which means it's lacking information. So we have to start seeing food and water as information Instead of just sources of energy, like you shop for gasoline, and that's why holistic healing is the understanding that every input into your body is a source of information. A carrot has the capacity to create order in certain physiological situations, and it can create disorder. Someone's got too much blood sugar, high blood sugar, and you have them drinking carrot juice, it's the wrong kind of information. But if you eat that carrot raw, it's got a much lower glycemic index. You you get the fiber in your body. And now you from the same substance, you're getting a different alchemical effect because the nature of the information changes. 
So ultimately, medicine, everything in the universe is coupled, boiled down to two things, energy and information. Mm -hmm. So what medicine really is, is learning how to use the concept of energy, the capacity to make change and information, bring things into formation so that there's actually harmony between the physiological, emotional, and psychological elements of the human being. And in my model, spirituality means connecting to a greater whole. Mm -hmm. So as we grow physically, emotionally, and mentally, we naturally have more heart awareness. And we start realizing that um, I can't be happy unless my spouse is happy. I can't be happy when there's people getting bombed next door in another country um, and being treated unfairly because I'm a human being and they're a human being. I come to the realization that we couldn't have life on the earth unless it was for the moon because none of our tides would move and everything would die. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, we can't be healthy or happy or even live without the sun. So what you see is as you grow spiritually, your sphere of awareness grows until all of a sudden you realize, oh, wow, I couldn't be here without the entire universe. It took the whole universe to make me. So whatever I am, Mm -hmm. Whoever I am, I am a product of the entire universe. And, and exactly that, how it is, right? Exactly, exactly yeah. how it is, meaning exactly where the placement of the moon is, where the sun is. Yes. These are all yeah. incredibly, if it was off a little bit even, we, we may not be having this discussion. And one of the oldest sciences on the planet is astrology, which gets poo-pooed by the Western mind because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Astrology is a study of the forces of change. Mm. Astrology is the study of how things change, the alchemy of life. And the bigger a solar mass, the more influence it has on any other solar mass. Our sun has more influence on us than our moon. But if you cut the size of the moon in half, everything on this planet would die. Everything. So really, astrology came from ancient people who weren't being distracted by iPhones and pornography mm. Because the sky was their television. And when storms came or earth changes came, they paid close attention to what was happening in the sky and quickly began to realize, wow, if that star is in that position, when that one's in that position, you get really high tides. It's a bad time to sail and things like that. Farmers figured this out. I mean, today, to this very day, one of the most accurate books about what's going on in the world is the Farmer's Almanac. Mm hmm and, and really, if you study Christianity, it's actually a record of astrological changes. Mm. Jesus Christ is actually a name that signifies the sun. Everything in the Bible, if you study it authentically with a scholar that understands it, and Jordan Maxwell is somebody who's studied this stuff his whole life and is a great teacher of this, and I've got Bibles showing exactly what's going on, and they have footnoted, oh, this relates to this star or this relates to the moon, but they've wrote it up as a story because they didn't have a scientific language. So it's interesting when you start actually getting into religions, you see a lot of them are star religions and all those religions developed in nomadic times where we had to use the stars to navigate. So because they used the stars to navigate, they were very sensitive to the changes in the environment when things changed in the stars, planets, and moon. Mm -hmm. And so those religions really are stories deifying stars in the role of a person, but it's a mythological expression of something objectively being observed in the astrology or this astronomy around us. Another incredibly fascinating topic, Al alchemy, astrology, and then, you know, you put it so nicely that everything is energy and information. Yeah. And I, I've known that speaking with some of the top doctors out there that if you could, you know, if you could key into that, you could help so many more people rather than trying to force biochemistry, which is a top level type of situation already. You're looking, you know, yeah. downstream so far that, yeah, you, you'll, you'll be able to manipulate things, but you're not healing. I've had cases where I've used every skill I have and used every expert I could refer people to, and the patient wasn't healing, often cancer cases. And so 
I said, okay, it's time to refer them to a medical astrologer, which I happen to have a very good Vedic medical astrologer here. Mm -hmm. And in the cases that I've done that, the medical astrologer was able to identify planetary forces in their chart that were in conflict. And in each case said, this person will begin to heal in X number of weeks or months. And in every single case, right exactly as they said it, the person began to heal while the therapy had not changed a bit. Mm. So you need the correct environment and timing there, yes. astrologically, which is, of Look, course, something none of us really pay attention what do, to. What do we all know about computers when Mercury is in retrograde? They do some crazy things. They do crazy shit. Why? <laughs> because it's affecting the flow of energy and information in the entire planetary system. And what are we? Energy and information, right? So when mm -hmm. you actually start paying attention to what happens during eclipses, to what happens during Mercury and retrograde, if you start studying what are the effects and the alchemists map this all out beautifully, they know exactly what metals each planet affected. Steiner mapped it out. Steiner showed you could determine which planetary bodies were the creative influences on any plant or tree tree by measuring the mathematical ratio on the length of the stalk to the branches. And he showed a formula and he said that plant is primarily under the influence of Saturn because his mathematical ratio is correlated to the orbital pattern of Saturn. And, and Steiner was really, uh, you know, someone who was a genius. But the point that I'm making is the ancients had figured a lot of this stuff out. And we today, modern Wise guys say, oh, these people were antiquated. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, I got a question for you. How come we still can't build pyramids then? Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a crazy arrogance, isn't it? I feel it's, like it's usually a, yeah. yeah, modern day people just look back and say, oh, they were primitive. They were. I'm sorry, yeah. but some of this stuff is not. It's beyond the technology we have now. We've got pyramids built with 100 ton blocks of stone milled to within 15 thousandths of an inch of perfection. Right. We don't even have the technology to move those stones, let alone mill those stones and make them all fit together and have the profound effects on the planet. Nor do we uh, ever ask ourselves, how did they know to position them directly, directly under star systems specifically and do it all over the world with a level of accuracy that only a pilot could appreciate? It, it, you can't explain that. And I remember going to Petra and, and seeing what was there in Jordan. A thousand years ago, they built this and there were earthquakes and some of it was damaged, but some of it was so precisely built, they said. Yeah. I mean, you have modern day skyscrapers that could fall if they're not maintained within a few years. That would just yeah. be completely gone. And, yeah. and you look at the precision of everything there and it's just, it's mind boggling sometimes. Yeah. So I do think we have to tap into that ancient wisdom more and respect yeah. it more and, and be able to utilize that in modern day times so that we yes. can help heal ourselves.